From China to Louisiana, should we blame the pursuit of clout for these recent tragedies? And how do you not let social media ruin society? Yeah, I mean, this is going really viral right now. It's a hot topic. Two terrible incidents. One was in the Bahamas involving an 18-year-old named Cameron Robbins who was dared to jump into shark-infested waters at night. And, uh, you know, many people believe that he, he passed away, was possibly eaten by sharks. And this is all caught on video, by the way. There's another video from China of a live streamer called Brother 3000, Andrew. He lost a challenge with other live streamers. He had to drink three bowls of baijiu, which is uh, like a very strong Chinese liquor. And he was found passed away the next day as well. And this has a lot of people asking, is social media ruining society? Is clout ruining society? Or is it more just human nature and social media is not to blame? Yeah, well, we're going to get into it, guys. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we delve into the comments section and give our own takeaways. But I guess a main question that I have, David, is it is it as easy as saying social media and the pursuit of clout and all these platforms need to be regulated somehow, just as people say, hey, guns don't kill people, people kill people. Or it's not cars that kill people, it's people in cars that kill people. And it's not drugs themselves that kill people, it's people overdoing drugs that kill people. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that there's an argument for regulation. I do think in America it's difficult because there's such a strong ideal of freedom of speech. Um, I think it's different. Andrew, even Canada has different laws. The UK, Australia has different laws regarding the usage of social media than we have in America. So I think that, I don't know, it, it, can you regulate industry specifically and compartmentalize it? Or is it like overarching, like freedom is freedom? And I guess anybody out there who feels like that social media should be regulated, how do we do it? Do we just mon de demonetize certain types of content, things like that, uh, to discourage people from making it? But anyways, let's get into the comments section for the uh, tragic uh, uh, Cameron Robbins story. Somebody said, mixing alcohol with kids on a cruise ship is just a bad idea in general. However, this was going on before social media and it will go on forever. Yeah. So basically people have been doing, or I guess boats have a really high accident rate in general. A lot of people die on boats. A lot of people die yeah, on the water. Happens. Somebody, um, at my middle school, the summer of going into high school, and they passed away in our local lake, but there was just no social media back then. So some people are saying, well, it could or could not have happened with or without social media. Right, guys. I mean, I, I just feel like because everything's being caught on video, it seems like it happens more often, which I think certain things definitely do happen more often nowadays, but I'm not sure... Uh, about this. I mean, because people are always doing stupid things. People have uh, overdosed on alcohol in, in hazing uh, situations right. too. Right, like for even back to the 1940s, 50s, 60s, yeah. like way before the internet even existed. I would say this though, do you think the people in the video that are actually like cheering him on and being like, okay, bye bye Cameron, like trying to sound cool on video. First of all, I'm sure this kid feels horrible right now knowing what happened. Right. But I'm like, he's trying to still sound cool for the clout on the video while his friend's like pretty much about to die. Yeah, and I, I don't know if everybody knew what was happening at the time. So I'm not saying that obviously anybody wanted this kid to get sucked up by the boat or killed by sharks. Obviously, I don't think anybody was wishing that on him, but I don't think anybody had an idea what was going on. Everybody's just in a frenzy, being drunk. First of all, they're underage and shouldn't be drinking, and they're out in the Bahamas. You're not supposed to jump off a boat. You're not supposed to throw anything off a boat. You're not even supposed to oftentimes be running around on a boat. You know what I mean? So there's just probably so many things that are going wrong. Somebody said, we definitely all did some dumb-ish as drunken men when we were growing up. Everybody who's 18 years old and filled with testosterone feels like they are immortal. But I do think social media plays into that. Yeah. I mean, I have done some stupid things that didn't turn out as bad as it could have, right? And this was before social media. So I understand that it happens. But I guess the issue is, like, and you know what sucks for, for this situation is that I'm sure... He had jumped off a number of boats in his life. This is not the first time he's been around a boat. It's probably not the first time he's drank on a boat. It's probably not the first time he's jumped off a boat. But this was like the worst possible situation. And the amount of crowd and cameras out just added to it. Like maybe maybe if the cameras aren't there and everybody's cheering him up, he doesn't jump off this boat at night. Yeah. When the sharks are very active. Yeah. I guess uh, the prefrontal cortex of the brain, Andrew, is not developed until the mid-20s. So when people do social media that are below their mid-20s, they are just more likely to just do some super erratic 
essentially to outside people viewed as very stupid behaviors. Yeah. Somebody said, uh, my son was trying to impress a girl at homecoming and he ate a metal dime. He didn't tell me. And a few days later, we had to get emergency surgery to save his life because the metal inside of his body was just causing a lot of problems. All right. First of all, man, why are you trying to impress a girl by eating a coin? That is, I don't even know what, like, hey, Billy, I bet, I bet you can't swallow this dime. And if you do, I'm going to think you're really cute. Like, that would, I don't know if she said that. I, you know, I just think sometimes socially deviant behavior from the norms is just viewed as cool, but obviously eating a dime, that's just uncool. It don't make any sense. Somebody said, uh, how come the comments on the Cameron Robbins story are split into two camps where um, some people are just making fun of him and other people feel so sad? This is another outcome of social media where rather than just analyzing the situation, some people are just pointing and make, almost like, seem glad in their comments and other people are sad right i mean i think a lot of people on the in on the internet want to see stupid people suffer and people are like yeah he did something stupid i don't care that he's dead you know and i i think that's too harsh i think that that i don't think that that person leaving that comment obviously has like a lot of maybe like happiness in their life but i don't think like yeah i'm not gonna mourn this kid because i don't know him and he was it was something silly to do you know but i guess I'm just trying to see what we can all learn from it. For sure, for sure. It's a terrible thing, I mean, at the end of the day. Somebody said, are his friends going to be liable for his death that dared him? This kind of goes back to your point about regulation. Like, if you encourage somebody to do something stupid and they end up uh, dying as a result of it, do you bear any responsibility for it legally or in the criminal court system? I think this case is a little different than, like, being pushed and forced to over drink alcohol, you know what I mean? By like outside forces. Like there was, there was, a, there's been a fraternity, right? That got, everybody got charged for um, partial murder because one of the rush, people rushing overdosed on alcohol and then like they didn't take him to the hospital soon enough, right? So in that case, I think that there's a lot more responsibility to go around. I think it's tough with this because unless he got pushed off and like these guys like picked him up and was like as a joke, threw him off the boat, those guys would probably get charged for it. But I don't know what's going to happen legally. But I definitely think this brings up some questions, yeah. especially as we move into this such a clout-driven era and sometimes the pursuit of this cloud or this attention, it goes down. You saying they should somebody get, gotta be responsible. Should, should the friends be penalized? Should everybody on that boat be penalized somehow? Like, should they get some type of mark on their record for being part of this, even though they are not responsible for it? I mean, it's highly unlikely within the current system. I'm just asking the questions. Moving on, Andrew, to the story from China, San Qing or Brother 3000. He was a known live streamer, Andrew. I think he lost some sort of challenge to the other live streamers streamers he drank on camera three gigantic bowls of baijiu you know baijiu anywhere from really super. what 50 to 60 percent it's super strong baijiu is is a it's a no joke alcohol i mean that stuff it it just feels like it burns right yeah. so of course i'm not saying that he shouldn't be drinking that much alcohol either but anyways but if there was beer he he might not have passed away yeah and i think it's crazy because there's a video of it because he was live streaming himself obviously doing the punishment from right. losing the challenge. Other people were bringing up uh, this referenced a case in 2007, Andrew, where this woman named Jennifer Strange was trying to win a Wii console from an American radio station and uh, died from water intoxication because she kept drinking uh, gallons and gallons of water. So mm -hmm. this has even happened in America. Somebody said... Um, in the Chinese social media, basically this guy had failed at a lot of different businesses and being an influencer was the only thing he was financially successful at mm. and good enough at where he could support his father and uh, mother. Right. So right. I guess what, what, what do you say to this? Because that's why he basically, because people were like, why is this guy so committed to doing this? And it's like, because this is, he found like, he felt like he found his calling. Right, right, right. And I think it, the tough thing is, is like when you are a no talented, like you have zero talent and you find out that you can garner attention, then you just end up doing something that ultimately can hurt you. But it's almost like you don't want to stop people from making a living, right? And supporting their family if that is how they're supporting their family. So I don't know. It's like a catch 22. I don't know. What do you do in this situation, right? Yeah. I mean, it's really interesting. I mean, this is like another like mechanical thing. But in China, Andrew, they're saying the problems are arising a lot more from live streaming. Whereas in America, you know, live streaming is not as popular. 
and it's almost more like clout videos that get spread around and going viral. Exactly. Um, exactly. Another, there was another case in Shaman Andrew. People were making fun of each other on live stream, and that somebody attacked somebody with a sword with a machete, and they got their hand cut off. And this is teenager on teenager. Yeah. And I, I would think that is surprising to hear in China because you don't imagine Chinese people to be that, like, aggressive. But I guess there are so many Chinese people. And Chinese people are just like any other human, right? They want attention. It's human nature to be doing things for money and attention. And it just goes too far sometimes. Yeah, shamans in Fujian, too. They get busy out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's true. Somebody said, it goes to show you that Chinese social media is just as toxic and bad as American social media. For some reason, we had everybody believing in America that they were just watching science videos all day. Yeah, no. And, and here's the thing. Listen, China is such a big country. You have to understand, China has like 3.5 times the amount of people in China than in America. So yes, you are going to hear crazy stories, but it's almost like, I guess nobody, everyone in the world is clout chasing. It doesn't matter the country or the situation or the culture you're it's, from. It's human they, nature because clout is attention and everybody wanted attention. They are clout chasing in some way and people are just taking it too far. But this is an issue that plays into human nature all across the globe. So Andrew, let's get into our takeaways is it the human nature that's messed up that wants the clout and the attention? Or is it the tools that enable it? Or is it both? Because you can only regulate one. You can't really regulate the human innate desire for attention. Exactly. And Do recognition. you regulate the tool that enables that human nature to manifest itself in the worst way possible. Right. Allows them to release the endorphins and get the dopamine and right. the oxytocin and things like that. I mean, like that. you have cars. Cars are dangerous for a number of reasons, and that's why you have to get a license for cars. Obviously, a lot of people are arguing that you need just as much training and licenses to own a gun because guns can kill a lot of people, right? If you just decide to one day, right? You just decide to kill five people, you can do it, right, with a gun. So I guess, like, the truth is, I don't know. Social media doesn't right look like a weapon it doesn't look like a dangerous tool but clearly it can be used to for destruction in certain ways but and i do think it uh, i don't know if it encourages a behavior that's not there but it can certainly exaggerate a pre-existing desire yeah so if your know. pre-existing desires to like want to get dopamine this way th whether it's degenerate or not degenerate Social media allows you to like really lean into that. Or is it just on the parents and being raised properly? It It's on the parents and the teachers to teach these kids how to deal with social media. Just also that what parents got to teach their kids about guns, right? And yeah. how to handle a gun. And then parents got to teach their kids how to drive, right? I, I think the most difficult thing, and this is my actually honest answer that I just don't think will happen, is I think you really have to separate your kids from social media for quite a few years when they're... Uh, in their upbringing and raise them amongst real world and then introduce them later. Like you cannot raise somebody on social media that deep that early. Well, the question is, let's say parents are getting lazy and they're not trying to teach their kids things. They're putting them on social media, but social media is unregulated. And then the kid has access to all these other things. Somewhere along that process, there is not enough regulation, if not by the parents, then by you know, the authorities. Yeah, but anyway, two tragic incidents, RIP to everybody involved, and um, it's not meant to, like, you know, make fun of anybody's death. It's terrible, but it's just like, what can we learn moving forward to prevent this in the future? All right, everybody, until next time, please leave your comment down below. We are the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.